Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, this one a mono green stompy deck featuring Vivian, Monstrous Advocate, the new 5 mana planeswalker from Ikoria that says we can look at the top of our library at any time and cast creature spells from the top of our library as well. The plus one ability makes a 3-3 beast token with our choice of Vigilance, Reach or Trample and the minus two says when we cast our next creature spell this turn we can search our library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost and put it onto the battlefield. So these green stompy decks sometimes used to play Nissa at five mana and Vivian's very comparable, they both make 3-3 creatures essentially. The advantage of Nissa is of course that the creature essentially has haste but the advantage of Vivian is that we also get additional card advantage through the passive ability, which of course this deck is full of creatures, so we'll often get a ton of value from the passive. So both Planeswalkers have their advantages, but in a deck that's not really trying to ramp into anything huge, I can see Vivian being slightly better. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana of course we need to have our Pelt Collector as a one mana one one that grows whenever we play a bigger creature. We have the full playset of Growth Chamber Guardian at 2 mana, which also synergizes quite nicely with the Great Henge. Since we can play the Growth Chamber Guardian, it gets a counter, and then we can search up additional copies to draw more cards with the Great Henge. If you really want to adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian, you can always adapt in response to the Great Henge trigger, and that way you get uh, the two additional plus one plus one counters from adapt if you've got a spare mana. We've got the full place of the Paradise Root, which can also help us ramp into our various expensive Planeswalkers, and still a two-powered creature to grow the Pelt Collector. And then we also have the full play set of Barkhide Troll as a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two that comes into play with a plus one plus one counter and can gain Hexproof if we remove a plus one plus one counter. Has a bit of synergy in the deck too with the Vivian Arcbow Ranger that can replenish the plus one plus one counter so it gains Hexproof again if needed and also makes for a nice mutate target since it will still get that plus one plus one counter. Same goes for our next card, Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrick, one of the reasons to play this mono green stompy deck as a three mana zero zero that enters a battlefield with four plus one plus one counters and whenever we play a green creature it picks up an additional plus one plus one counter so it makes for an excellent mutate target since it will pick up all those plus one plus one counters on top of whatever mutate creature we have. So it works quite nicely with the Gem Racer at uh, 4 mana that we can mutate for 3 as a 4-4 four, four Reach Trampler. And giving Yorvo Trample, of course, is also quite nice since otherwise it can easily be chum blocked. And besides Gem Racer, I'm still running two copies of the Thrashing Brontodon in case we don't have the early mutate target for the Gem Racer. And by having Brontodon in our deck, we can also potentially search it up with Vivian's minus 2 ability if we play a 4 or 5 mana creature and that way we can still blow up an artifact or enchantment, whereas if we search up the gem raiser, then of course we won't be able to trigger the ability when we uh, get the gem raiser with Vivian, since we won't get to mutate. And then besides gem raiser, we also have questing beast at four mana as another very powerful threat that can help us take out planeswalkers, and the haste is also very relevant. And then Vivian Arcbow Ranger, not a reason to be a mono green deck as we get to make use of this powerful Planeswalker that can distribute plus one plus one counters, also gives trample, so great with Yorvo, the minus three act as removal, and every now and then we might minus five, and that's why we have this sideboard here, so we can potentially search up some cards with Vivian Arcbow Ranger, although to be honest you almost never use the minus five ability. One card I do want to point out in the sideboard that could be useful is a Loaming Shaman as a way to shuffle the opponent's graveyard back into their deck, which is very relevant against a cycling deck to potentially nerf the opponent's zenith flare so it doesn't kill us even if we're far ahead on board and then at five mana of course we've got our vivian and then two copies of a god eternal ronas as a five mana five five legendary zombie god with death touch and when ronas enters the battlefield we double the power of each other creature we control until end of turn and those creatures also gain vigilance until end of turn so a nice trick we have available in this deck is if we have Vivian Monsters Advocate in play, we can use a minus two ability, cast God Eternal Ronas, search up a copy of Questing Beast. The Questing Beast will enter the battlefield before Ronas, and then when Ronas enters the battlefield we can potentially attack with an eight powered Questing Beast out of nowhere and potentially steal the game. And then finally we've got two copies of the Great Henge, which is also amazing in a deck like this, when we have a giant creatures like Yorvo to give the Great Henge a massive discount, and this will provide tons of life gain and card advantage, and of course great with the Growth Chamber Guardian as we pointed out. 
And then we've got 19 forests and 4 copies of Castle Garenbrig, which can also be useful at ramping out some creatures. And then looking at the sideboard, we've got 15 different one-off creatures that we might want to search up with Vivian Argbo Rangers minus 5 ability. Although, to be honest, I can't remember the last time that I've actually used Vivian's minus 5. Usually just better off using the plus 1 and minus 3 a bunch. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. On the play, facing a Yorion deck. So, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna keep. We've got triple Pelt Collector, which is a very strong start. Just gotta hope to dodge a uh, Deafening Clarion or Shatter the Sky. Opponent on the Jeskai variants. Can go Paradise Root into Barkite Troll, so the Pelt Collectors grow an additional time. Alright, no Clarion, please. It's a ferry, that's manageable. So now we'll have to think about the implications of a Shatter the Sky next turn. But I don't think we can really beat it if they have it. So I'm just gonna pretend like they don't. And I'm gonna ignore Teferi. Just go face. Alright, then our opponent didn't have to shatter the sky and dies to the Pelt Collector Assault. On to the next one. We're on the play facing an Obosh deck. So it could be Mono Red, Mono Black, Red Black, who knows. But uh, yeah, we've got a pretty balanced hand. Brontodon can also be quite good if our opponent's on the Sacrifice variants. Or really any of the monocolored versions are going to be playing Heraldic Banner most likely, which the Brontodon can also destroy. Looks like the Mono Red version. I think I'll keep back Pelt Collector. We've got Vivian that kind of gives us inevitability in a sense. Don't really want to be racing. They had a stomp anyway. Fair enough. I'll take two. Given that I'm not going to be sacrificing Brontodon this turn, I guess I could play Troll. Still keep Paradise Raid back so I can be guaranteed to play uh, Vivian next turn. Seems more important than getting in 2 damage. And then we can start making Beast Tokens. Ooh, Argo Ranger is also a nice one, but... Start with Monsters Advocates. Great Hench coming up. And then... Don't think we need Reach against Monorets. They could have Phoenix of Ash, but that's a pretty unusual card for them to have. Let's just go with uh, Vigilance. I'd like you to meet my friend, Stompy. And then the goal is just to eventually get this Great Henge in play, which should give us even more inevitability. And we don't need to fear Amber Cleave, given that they have Obosh as companion. Opponent goes face. I'll make some trades. They might have another Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant to finish off the beasts after we block. Maybe they needed to enable a line up the stage. There's a stomp. And a line up the stage, alright, so they had both. So 
So I could play this Paradise Root for free. Or I can play a Vivian, which seems better here. I guess I could go Paradise Root plus Brontodon, which is still pretty mana efficient. And I guess a free card's a free card. And we'll go with uh, Vigilance once again. Beauty lies in variation. All right, put in place Annex and concedes. So yeah, Vivian definitely did quite a bit of work this game, giving us free card advantage and making a bunch of three threes. On to the next one. We're on the play, and we've got a pretty interesting hand. Two Great Henge, of course, not the best, but we do have the Yorvo to power it out, and Yorvo into Questing Beast, also pretty strong start. So I'm tempted to keep. Even if the second Henge is probably going to be useless. Opponent also on Mono Green, alright. Great Henge, definitely quite good in a mirror match. Can expect our Yorofu to survive. But our opponent does have the better start with the turn one Pelt Collector. Although 4-4 is gonna be a nice brick wall to prevent the opponent from attacking us. And then we can go Questing Beast into Great Henge, most likely. Stone Call for two. It's not too bad. And I can even afford to attack with the uh, Questing Beasts, as they can only block with the Barkai Troll. All right, and then next turn we might even be able to go Great Henge into Brontodon. Opponent's got their own Yorvo. But they can't really attack. Yeah, let's play Great Henge first. I could play Pelt Collector, so my Great Henge costs one less, but I want to play Pelt Collector after we play Henge. I might actually want to play before I play Brontodon, so it starts picking up more plus one counters. And if we draw into a two drop, we can still play it here. Alright, no two drop. Uh, do I want to attack? This would just trade for Yorvo or two of the three threes. Which I guess could be okay. Don't really want to attack with Yorvo. Yeah, let's send in the Questing Beast. Could be bad if they have another Yorvo, actually. Maybe it's not needed. It's gonna be Gem Racer mutated onto Yorvo, so that's gonna be getting pretty big. And yeah, that does destroy the Henge, so I guess having the second Henge is going to be useful after all. Play Henge, and then probably play Brontodon. Grow the Pelt Collector. And then we would love to find one of our Planeswalkers to start pulling ahead. Because there is a bit of a ground stall happening. Brontodon can also destroy Stone Coil Serpents. Although the 2-2 isn't much of a threat. Barkai Troll seems slightly better than Paradise Root here.
All right, so we got to draw some extra cards. Still not really interested in attacking. Hope they don't have another gem raiser. It's gonna be Champion of the Wilds. So now they can play their creatures at instant speed. We get to untap and there's Vivian, perfect. So let's play Vivian and then see what's on top of our deck before doing anything else. Another Vivian incoming. So can draw into it with the Paradise Druid and maybe there'll be another creature on top that we can then play off the top of our deck. And then what mode do we choose on Beast Token? Don't expect Reach to be necessary, so between Vigilance and Trample, I guess we'll choose Vigilance. Beauty lies in variation. And I guess we'll pass. So now we've got all our engines at uh, full capacity here. The Great Eng, the two Vivians. Should be able to pull ahead. And your voice the biggest thing in play. So it's playing defense quite well. And eventually we can maybe find God Eternal Ronos to set up a lethal attack. Another gem racer. Alright, that does take care of my Great Henge. Yeah, I guess I misplayed here. I could have used my Brontodon in response to the mutation to destroy the Stone Cold Serpents. All things begin and, end. and then of course they wouldn't have destroyed the Henge, but... I don't think we even need the Henge anymore at this point. Although it still would have been better to make that play. Alright, let's untap. Play some stuff over the top. So our opponent probably also misplayed by mutating onto the Stone Coil instead of one of their other creatures. Um, can just play Yorvo just because. But alright, opponent has seen enough. Vivian a little bit too good in the matchup. On to the next one. We're on the draw facing another Obosh deck. And see, so yeah, I've got a reasonable hand. Looks like they're on the mono red version. Once again, well, let's see if our opponent has a better chance this game. A card like Yorvo is definitely quite good in the matchup as the red deck struggles to kill a 4 4 and plays defense quite well. For now, we'll play the Bark High Troll. Growth Chamber Guardian would die to Stomp, so seems better to play the 3-3 three, three here. Fervent Champion. So if they have a Stomp, they can still attack with the First Striker. So that's what this attack implies. I'll take it. Next turn I can block with the Orvo on the Fervent Champion, and then the two damage wouldn't be enough. I'll still keep the Bark High Troll on defense, don't really need to race the Mono Red deck. Heraldic Banner. Alright, so now they can still attack and stomp. But they're just gonna hang back with Fervent Champion, Vivian's a nice pickup. Decisions, decisions. I mean, if I play Questing Beast, they can block, so they can do their Stomp shenanigans. So I kind of like that idea, and then next turn maybe play one of our Vivians. Uh, 
and then I'll leave Yorv on defense, so even if they play a Bosch, I can block a two-powered creature and not lose my 5-5. Five -five. Also, then of course a Stomp will deal double damage, but then I can use Vivian to minus and kill a Bosch. So that's the plan here, keep Yorvo alive. They also had a shock, so maybe they had shock instead of stomp last turn. But Yorvo's alive, which is what matters. With the at my side, I can't lose a fight. And our opponent concedes to us killing a bush. Awesome. So yeah, the mono red matchup seems quite good with this deck since we've got these huge creatures that our opponent can't really get past. And we just need to eventually find a way to deal with a bush or go over the top. And we don't really struggle to do that. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw facing a Keruga deck, so probably Fires of Invention. This hand's pretty awkward with the two Ronas and only two lands. Probably gonna have to mulligan. Alright, this is much better. Love to see the Brontodon to blow up a fires. So, probably gonna keep Pelt Collector Druid's Brontodon and get rid of the Guardian. Although, Guardian getting extra copies of itself is nice if our opponent has a bunch of sweepers, so we don't run out of threats. So could see Brazen Borrower or Bonecrusher Giant still uh, be used this turn. And there's a Brazen Borrower. Alright, at least the fairy can bounce the Paradise Roots. Opponent with two islands, so even if they had Clarion, they might have been unable to cast it. And there's the ferry. Well, if they have a sweeper, we're probably gonna lose. This turn, I'm thinking double Pelt Collector into. Paradise Druids, and then next turn the Barkai Troll can grow the Pelt Collectors once more. The Planeswalkers and the Great Henge are kind of our way to potentially beat Sweeper effects since they give us a lasting board presence or a way to generate card advantage that doesn't rely on just having a creature in play. But with this hand, we don't really have any other options. Wow. Mythos of Vadrok. Haven't seen that one before. Pretty good here. Left with only a Paradise Druid, so pretty good impression of a Sweeper. I'll protect you. I guess it's time to start attacking Teferi. And then do I play Brontodon or Barkai Troll? I mean, they didn't have Fires of Invention, otherwise we would have seen it last turn. So it's basically a 3-4 versus a 3-3 semi-hexproof. If they had Deafening Clarion, they would have played it over Mythos. I guess we'll go with Barkai Troll. Could also play both and not attack the Fairy. I think I should attack the ferry. Time for plan B. As soon as I think of one. They could also just play their companion. It's gonna be a cavalier of gales instead. Yeah, we're pretty far behind here. Not sure what we can draw to get out of this. I guess Vivian would be okay. Making some reach beast tokens. Can't quite cast a Great Henge yet. I have a 
All right, there's Vivian. Although, probably still too far behind. Karuga draws two. We're at 15. So let's play Vivian, I guess. I could kill the fairy, but then I have to lose one of my two creatures. Which doesn't seem worth it, because then also Kiruga gets to pressure my Vivian. We have another Vivian incoming, which I guess could be useful. Diversity. And then the game plan is just to keep jumping this cavalier until we can find a better solution for it. Assuming they attack my planeswalker here. No, I am not making this up as I go. All right, there's a clarion to wipe my board, so that's probably going to be game over. Gets to take out Vivian, put me to ten. And next turn they can use the ferry to bounce the token from Vivian, and I'll be dead on board. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. We're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Got a nice curve of creatures. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain. So it doesn't appear to be the cycling deck. Stinkin. Let's attack. Opponent didn't have any one mana plays on turn one. So could be difficult for them to cast two spells this turn. It's gonna be a three mana Cure the Critics. Fair enough. Let's see if they can double spell this turn. Laying fire, all right. Well, this questing beast is gonna hit like a truck. Put him down to seven. And we're very close to casting a Great Henge, which is quite good against Monored, as you can imagine. So now they can make mana with the Steamkin. Not before attacking. I don't really mind trading. Because I just need one of my four powered creatures to stay alive. And a ginger brute, that's fine. So I can slam Henge. And attack. Well, the Pelt Collector tramples, so jumping here doesn't accomplish a whole lot. Can still gain two life with a hench, end of turn. And then the Brontodon will be our first creature to draw us an extra card. Bone's just gonna stomp our face. And a light of the stage makes sense. I 
Vivian right on time. And mutate the gem racer. And that should be lethal. Alright, sweet. So even on the draw, we managed to beat yet another mono red deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand's pretty awkward. Two Yorvos and two Vivians and only two lands. Yeah, this is probably gonna be a mulligan for me. This is better. And then between Growth Chamber Guardian or Troll, which two drop do we prefer? Uh, Guardian is pretty cute with uh, Vivian's plus ability, so we can search up additional copies, so let's do that. Still gonna play the Paradise Route first, and hope to draw land so we can run out Argor Ranger. on the red black Nature will take back what rightfully belongs to it my my how you've grown so not exactly sure what our opponent's playing maybe a sacrifice deck it's gonna be a midnight Reaper all right um, I could minus and kill the Reaper, but it doesn't bother me that much. My, my, how you've grown. And then I think I'll play another Guardian before we attack with the Paradise Druids. And then hope to draw land so we can play... Monsters Advocates, so Strider definitely implies pretty big sacrifice theme, and there's a land for Monsters Advocates. So I could minus and still have enough loyalty to minus again next turn, which might be the play. Or I can just try and go bigger. Yeah, I mean... I don't really have to kill any of their creatures here, especially considering they would get value either way from the Midnight Reaper and the Strider's Cry. So I think I'm okay just plussing a bunch. And we'll go for... It's either Trample or Vigilance here. Let's go Vigilance. Could also minus five with Vivian at some points. Get another Guardian. Shuffle the top of our deck. So next round we're drawing a troll. I'll stay back. Maybe next round we can start attacking. Claim the Firstborn to steal my Paradise Druids. Fair enough. Now let's double block with the Guardians. Opponent lets damage happen. Draws a card from Reaper and we lost two of our creatures, but Plenty more creatures coming up. And there's Mayhem Devil. Now Mayhem Devil, I wouldn't mind killing here. They're gonna sag the goat to finish off Guardian. So they've got their powerful three drops in play here. Questing Beasts, gotta be the play. 
Now I could also minus this Vivian to get another creature, but I don't think there's anything I want to get. Although, hmm, maybe I do want to get like Yorvo here. But is that better than plusing? Probably not. We'll plus here. Go for Vigilance again. And I think I start by attacking. And then we'll probably minus in the second main phase. Opponent can sack to the Wost Rider. I draw a card and scry one. You're lower than worms. And deals one damage to Vivian. Called her familiar. And another one. So Cauldron Familiar, a reason to maybe choose Trample on the Beast Tokens from uh, Monsters Advocates. But uh, Arcbow Ranger can also plus to give Trample, so we should be alright. Brontodon to destroy the Oven. And a Yorvo to boots. Yeah, I guess we'll play Yorvo. So questing beasts can be blocked by the familiar, so we're just uh, target the beast tokens here. Thirteen power of trampling beasts attacking. And double blocks questing beasts. Chumps the beast tokens. So they're still taking nine trample after they sack familiar. But they're also losing a life to the Midnight Reaper, so they might actually be dead here. And they gain one from Familiar coming back. But they're still taking 9 Trample and losing 2 from Midnight Reaper. I guess they could lose only 1 if they sack it to the Strider, but that still leaves them dead. Alright, sweet. So both Vivians did a ton of work, not only in this game, but in all of the matches we've played today. So they are definitely the reason to play this mono green deck. They give the deck the much needed resiliency to board wipes alongside the Great Henge, so we don't just lose to the first Shatter the Sky the opponent plays. And they also give us a way to kind of go over the top if there's a board stall happening, providing value turn after turn. And I've got to admit, I was pleasantly surprised by Vivian Monsters Advocate's performance today. Wasn't quite sure if she was going to be better than Nissa who shakes the world, since the haste on the 3-3 is quite relevant, especially when facing Planeswalkers. But uh, Monsters Advocate definitely delivered, giving us a ton of card advantage off the top of our deck, and the various keywords on the beast tokens can also be useful, other than just having a 3-3 Vigilant land. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.